I thought we would just do a state of the collection video of a little bit of a difference. So what we have here is probably my first what? This one, unfortunately, the second hand doesn't work. As you can see, the, the date, the day, and the month work, although I can't actually change them so they're incorrect. And unfortunately, when I put a battery in, it just uh, refused to work. You can see the second hand is twitching. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> you know, so you can see the second hand is twitching away there, but not actually doing anything. So I'm not quite sure what happened there, but this is kind of like the first decent, half decent watch that I had, probably in the 19... 90s something uh, like that it has a rotatable bezel obviously hours minutes seconds and then the day date and the month down in the bottom so it's kind of like an, an early diver's watch for me even though I didn't know it was a diver's watch and it's not really a diver's watch but anyway whatever it's a hundred meter water resistance so this is the Adidas adventure then the next watch which i obtained and you're probably into the early 2000s or very late 1990s but i would say this is probably early 2000s this is the casio pro track this was the second watch that i got and i just kind of just never really bothered <laughs> selling on on watches i've just always you know kept them i bought this watch and this is the sunto advisor now when i say i don't know why i did it what i actually mean is i don't know why i got this one and <laughs> and this one here this is the sunto vector and this was the first time uh you know quite a few years ago again you're going back to the early 2000s when i had two watches concurrently and I never really quite understood why I did that and in fact I've just realized I did forget one watch to bring with me oh well we'll talk about it and then I can just add in some video of it basically I kind of brought the one of them and I really don't know which one I got first. And then I bought the other one. And the kind of idea that I had, bizarrely, which really doesn't make any sense, was that I would use this one as my daily watch. I think I could just like quite like the black background, but it was kind of after wearing this for several years that I decided that I didn't really like the black background so I've always tried kind of avoided it ever since I mean obviously black on some watches is fine but I just didn't like that reverse um that kind of reverse black on it and then this one I tended to wear when I was you know walking and I found it uh, you know very handy you know for 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 you know for walking with it had the altimeter barometer and compass on it so those were my next two watches now stupidly i forgot to bring my sunto after using these and these, I wanted a GPS watch for hiking and camping. So I then picked up the Sunto uh, Ambit 3. After using the Sunto Ambit 3 for several years, I had this idea that I wanted to switch over to a Garmin, uh, you know, a better sports GPS watch. So I bought the Garmin Fenix 6. So I then bought the Garmin Fenix 6X, which I have sold uh, just recently. And this is the 7X, which I bought earlier this year. And this is the watch that I wear 100% of the time on my right wrist. 
and maybe one day we'll do a video on why I wear two watches and how that kind of came about but primarily it was from just wanting to wear this watch and also having a good old collection of other watches that I just wanted to wear. We then start coming into the present day watches which then brings us kind of down here somewhat. So the next watch that uh, caught my attention was this one here. This is the Rolex Yachtmaster. This was my first proper watch, the Rolex Yachtmaster. After the Ro Yo after the Ulex. After the Rolex Yachtmaster, I got the Rolex Explorer 2 with the white dial. After that one, I bought the GMT Master 2 on the Jubilee bracelet, or the Batman as some call it, with the blue and black dial. After that one, I bought the Green Submariner, some know it as the Hulk. After that one, I was lucky enough to get the Rolex Daytona. And then after that one, I was lucky enough to get the GMT Master 2 blue and red dial on the Oyster bracelet commonly known as the Pepsi. That is the Rolex lineup pretty much there. If there's any specific, if there are any specific videos on those that you would be interested in, leave a comment below. That might help me with a few ideas. After those <laughs> six Rolex, which we all got from the authorized dealer. At the moment, there's a tiny, tiny drought going on. So we're still waiting for the next one. We're kind of hopeful for the Blue Dial Jubilee Blue Sky, but we will, <laughs> we will wait and see. Then I got a little bit tired of waiting and waiting and waiting. And that is kind of how we ended up over here. Because I was waiting so much, <laughs> getting a little bit impatient waiting, um, somehow the, 50 th the Blanc Pont 50 Fathoms happened and we were still waiting and I was chatting with my good friend Richard and he mentioned about the ball watch. And it kind of struck me as a really nice historical watch. So we kind of got the ball watch. And while this was going on, last year, so this would be 2021, somehow I got interested in G-Shock watches. So the first G-Shock that I obtained was the GWG 2000 Mudmaster. I did get, I did get a GGB 100, which I sent back and I did get a Gravity Master, which I also sent back because I just didn't really get on with them and I couldn't get a couple of the functions to work. So those I, I returned. After the GWG 2000, I think the next one I got, and videos kind of out there will probably point us in, in the direction of which direction that we went. And I can't quite remember what, <laughs> I can't quite remember what I got after, what I got after that one. It might have been, I think, I think what happened was I was watching a film with Chris Hemsworth in, and I saw that he was wearing a Rangeman 
So I got the range man which had to come from America. I bought the analog Frogman first. That's right, yes, I got the Frogman first in analog and it doesn't even have a depth gauge. And I thought, well, that's not much good. What happens if I want to chuck it in the sea, <laughs> see how deep the sea is? And I thought, that's no good. What happens if, if you want to go frogging? Um, that frogging, I said, not dogging. And you want to go frogging and, and you want to see how deep you are and it doesn't even have a depth gauge. So because that didn't have a depth gauge, I got the Frogman, uh, but this Frogman, the 1000, doesn't even have a depth gauge, and you need the D1000 for the depth. So that's how that one came about. Then after that, I think the next one I got was the, oh no, not that one, sorry, was the, the G-Shock Rubik's Cube. So I got that one. All of these have come from either America, Japan, or direct from G-Shock, depending on you know, availability and stock. And then after that one, I think, after that one, I think that the Timex came. <laughs> I just wanted to get something, something, you know, simple. So I've got a Timex from Amazon. And this is, of course, an automatic. And then the most recent one is the MTG B3000, which is this one. And this is pretty much where we stand at this moment in time. Now, I must admit, like everyone and else, I'm having to be, you know, a little bit careful at the moment. <laughs> a little bit careful. A little bit careful with this lot. So yeah, so that is basically where we stand at this moment in time. So I've, apart from any Rolex that, <laughs> that might happen to, to turn up, for the moment, I just put a bit of a break on other watches. Although having said that, I did order and I will have to wait until Christmas time for a new ball watch to arrive which is a special edition and you pay in advance and you get a little bit of a discount off of it. So that's going to arrive around Christmas time. And that's basically the state of play at this moment in time. And yes, I really did bring all of those camping with me and my killer dog over there. But as I say, obviously, I don't always carry these with me. <laughs> Keep them rather safe. But I knew where I was camping this trip. There would be not a soul around. Nobody would know I had these with me. And quite honestly, they're probably as safe here in the middle of nowhere as they are anywhere. Anyway, I hope you kind of enjoyed this. You know, this a fun little not so short video. I couldn't really go into details on them because then we'd be talking for 20 million years. I just wanted to go through individually the current state of play. I really want to try and do a video on the Mudmaster and the Frogman there at uh, some point because a really popular video at the moment is the Mudmaster and the and and the Range Man. That's going quite well. So I mean, there must be a million I'd video ideas in amongst this lot. And sometimes I sort of get either get too lazy or short of, of ideas or something. So if you've got any ideas or thoughts or requests or suggestions on future videos based on this, obviously post a comment below. And I am hoping to meet up with a friend of mine, Stephen, and do some more videos on his watches in the future. I do like switching bracelets. I just, I haven't switched bracelets on my Rolex for, you know, a little while, but I do like to play around with straps and bracelets from time to time. Anyway, I'm going to finish off. Hopefully you can 
see me now. Hello, I do exist. I hope you enjoyed this video, little fun video. I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.